So hi everyone, it's Kerry Griffiths, Willowbrook Lifestyle Financial Planning. Today's topic is all about private FDR. So if you've ever wondered what that is, or you're considering it, you want to understand a little bit more about it, then this is the video for you. Now, obviously I'm not an expert in this. It's got nothing to do with financial planning. It does have financial elements to it, but nothing to do with financial planning. So I have brought a guest along today. So I've got with me the wonderful Trisha Sadiq. She is a senior associate, associate in the family team at Wedlake Bell. She's very experienced uh, in all areas of family law, but her main focus is on wealth protection. She actively encourages out of course settlement, which includes mediation and includes private FDR. So she's going to tell us all about that. But before we get into the details, you just want to tell us a little bit more about yourself, Tricia. Thank you very much for asking me to speak about private FDR today and for the wonderful welcome and introduction. Um, just to tell you a little bit more about me, um, I'm a family law specialist, which means that I cover and advise and assist um, uh, clients on all areas of family law, whether it be uh, wealth protection, uh, divorce and financial cases, children matters, cohabitation disputes. Um, and I've been doing this job uh, for quite some time. Um, and it means that I've seen the full spectrum of um, clients from the start to the end. And I really enjoy and love and very much passionate about this job, um, mainly because I find and the processes that have changed uh, in the last five to 10 years have been so effective, whereby there's been more encouragement on alternative dispute resolution. And by that, I mean processes where you can go to mediation, uh, you can go for collaboration of um, uh, solicitors working together, uh, having roundtable meetings. It's no longer often the way that it used to be, which was very litigation focused. Yes. Um, and that means that we take the stress away from clients of a litigious process um, and to make it uh, much more um, available um, to the public to be able to use these um, wonderful processes, including private FDRs. Um, private FDRs themselves, just to give you a little bit more information, what is an FDR? Yes, so I appreciate me. many people may not have even be engaged in the in the process at all Can to understand what, what it is. FDR means? Yeah, let's even say what the word. What is an FDR? Are you using this, so, we know. So, absolutely. Um, uh, FDR stands for Financial Dispute Resolution. Yeah. It's the second stage of a financial proceedings case. And what happens is that prior to an FDR, you would have exchanged disclosure. So yeah. you would have exchanged financial information. So you would have an understanding of what you all have. Um, and there would also be a narrowing down, hopefully, of the issues that need to be discussed before a judge. Yeah. Um, and the role of the judge as an FDR is really to try and encourage settlement. It's a wonderful process in that the intention and hope is that with the assistance of the judge, you will be able to negotiate effectively and you will be able to come to a settlement and hopefully not have to go to a final hearing at all, which can be the most stressful part of a financial case. Um, so, yeah, so it's a wonderful process. It's there to work effectively, but unfortunately, it doesn't always um, take place in the manner that we lawyers and the clients would like, mainly because the family courts are just so overwhelmed with yeah. cases, and especially during now. COVID, you can imagine. Yeah, particularly yeah. now. Yeah. Particularly now where lots of cases are being sort of kicked off to the autumn or, or sometimes even the new year, it's yeah. very difficult to get an early FDR date just because the court, um, court staff are overwhelmed, judges are overwhelmed. Um, there's too many cases um, to try to allocate fair time. Um, so that's why there's a brilliant alternative, which is private FDRs. And I am strongly in favor of private FDRs because I personally have seen for my clients how they have, you know, the, the, the forum of private FDRs has enabled people to feel confident because you get to choose the judge together. So the okay. first step yeah. Yeah, is to choose who is your judge. You obviously wouldn't have that choice if you were in court. It would be Very whoever good. you're allocated to. Yeah. And sometimes... Um, you may not be happy with the judge um, because you may feel, mm, have they got the right specialism to assist me? Because you may have complex uh, issues in your case, um, mm -hmm. like international elements or um, trusts or um, complex pensions. And you may feel this judge 
doesn't have the right uh, area of um, experience or knowledge uh, to be able to assist me or that maybe they haven't read into the papers enough because uh, as you can imagine they may be doing a children's case in the morning a finance case in the afternoon and have many other um, hearings in the diary so have they given enough time to your case um, whereas the beauty of a private FDR is you have usually in good time in advance chosen together the judge and that judge can be uh, an experienced barrister an experienced solicitor, sometimes retired judges. Um, and what that means is that because you've had choice, clients feel more confident in what the judge has to say. And because you've chosen them, it means that you feel confident in the indications that they give for a settlement. And it means it encourages settlement because you are you've obviously invested in that person and you're yeah. saying, right, I, I, I believe you're going to help me. Uh, on both to, sides, both sides have invested. On both in. sides, yeah. exactly. Both sides have invested. So th there is no feeling of this judge may lean towards me more or you know her more. It's it's very much we're working collaboratively together. We've chosen the person; they're going to help us. So instantly, there is a sense of confidence going into the process. Perfect. It's also voluntary. So a court FDR is obviously a second stage of a process where. Uh, sometimes um, one party or the other, or sometimes both, can feel it's being imposed on you. So there's a court date's been set, you have to attend, it's compulsory. As a private FDR, it's entirely voluntary. Uh, you set the time, the date, and you can have the judge's attention the full day. Um, you know, often I've had FDR. You. Do you set the venue, Tricia, as well? You can set the venue. I mean, it, most um, FDRs take place in solicitors' offices or sometimes barristers' chambers. And, and it works Zoom brilliantly. Then? Over Zoom, yeah. yeah. So remotely, um, I've, I've done a fair number of private FDRs over um, the, the COVID situation, which have worked brilliantly. It's no different, really, to a remote hearing. Mm. Um, and it just means that you you have the full time allocated to you you've got the venue uh, of your choice um yeah. and it means you've got the, all the facilities available to you the number of times i've had fdrs in court where we're sitting in quite small and often quite unpleasant conference rooms or you know standing in corridors and not having enough uh, space available to you to discuss with your client to discuss with everyone how to get to a settlement so you've got all the facilities you've got your printer to print off documents you've got uh, you know a room for everyone to to sit in separately and um, so again that takes away stress it takes away pressure it makes it more easy yeah perfect um, yeah and as i mentioned in terms of timing you have a full day often to try to negotiate a settlement and sometimes that is what's needed um, there's been cases where i've settled at 9 10 pm just because people needed that time they needed a bit of time to reflect they needed a bit of time to think they needed time to take on board and in court you can feel rushed yeah. um and you can and like feel you said, that it might, might not be the on. only case that day in court exactly so you, it may not be rushed yeah, your judge is rushed and sometimes you want to just get back before the judge to say, well, look, we've narrowed the issues down, but we just need some guidance, judge, on one, two or three issues. Can you help us? Um, and you're waiting around uh, to be able to ask those questions. There's none of that wait time. That judge is, you know, instructed to help you. So things happen so much faster. Um, and, you know, the, the actual success rate of private FDRs are also absolutely brilliant. I mean, from the colleagues that I speak to from the evidence that I've seen settlement um, is often achieved at the end of a private FDR so are you um, which is fantastic like when you say I'm going to have a private FDR do you have to accept a judgment no you don't have to accept oh. a judgment um, it is the same as a court um, FDR in that you take on board hopefully the judge's indication um, and you try to uh, come to a settlement that is fair but if at the end of the day you are unhappy um, to, to or you for one reason or the other you don't feel that I can settle today you need to, more time to go away you need further information that's absolutely fine yeah. but you can you can also you can go back again you can have another private FDI if, if you require you can say to the judge look we, we're going to go away and think about certain matters but we may email you or we may need further time and they will allocate that time they will help you um, 
So nothing is imposed on you. Everything is voluntary. But because you feel more invested in the process, because yeah. you want to come to a resolution, most of the time you will have a settlement at the end of the day, which is wonderful to see because you can walk away knowing, right, we've come to a conclusion. Yeah, that's amazing. And I'm also right in thinking, Tricia, that um, what the judge would suggest as the most likely outcome and the kind of guidance he would give if ultimately the decision was made with no no we're going to go going to take this further then actually there needs to be some real strong rationale because that can take into account the actual who has to pay for what costs at the other end doesn't it mm -hmm. does that does that make sense what i'm saying i think yes i mean i mean costs itself has a significant bearing i think on um the way people progress their case um obviously with a private fdr judge you're you're paying for the private fdr judges fees yeah. but you're also conscious of if you do not settle at an FTR what the cost implications may be of going to a final hearing yeah. um, and what I found is the longer that it gets on the more expensive that it gets there will be further letters going backwards um, months and months of delay which unfortunately um, has, has the screen frozen Kerry no it's fine my end is it frozen okay. end? I think it has, but as long as you can see me, that's fine. I can see you and I can hear you. So keep going. Okay. Just Amazing. Me. Yeah. <laughs> um, so uh, in terms of delay and the cost implications of delay, that can be significant. So that is why the encouragement is to usually fairly soon thereafter. Very few cases actually go on to a final hearing. Uh, We had a couple of technical issues, but we're back. So we were just talking about cost. Should we start from the top there? Because I did just ask you quickly about, you know, kind of private FDR costs there. What kind of consideration should clients be giving? I think in terms of consideration of costs, that's always going to be a priority for everyone because they will have at the forefront of their mind. That they don't want to spend lots and lots of money on court cases and private FTRs. They want to try and preserve as much as they can for the yeah. benefit of their family. Yeah. Um, and I think private FTRs certainly assist, in fact, to try to limit the costs of uh, delay, for example. So in my experience, the longer a case goes on, the more money people end up spending on their case, sometimes not for good reason. It's just because, you know, correspondence goes backwards, forwards, not always actually aimed at bringing a conclusion to the issues. Um, whereas yeah. if you have a timetable in place, people work towards that timetable. They understand there is an element of time pressure to try to narrow down the issues, drill down on what they need input on uh, from the judge. Um, and as I mentioned earlier, because you have the flexibility of choosing the venue, the time, how long you're going to have the judge's attention for on the day, um, it means that you can speed up the progress of a case, especially during a pandemic. I mean, what I've seen is cases being kicked off, as I mentioned, uh, in the court system to the new year. And that's very frustrating because your life is on hold effectively you know whether you need to sell your house whether you need to implement a pension sharing order uh, whether you need to just think about the practical things in life about your children um, you don't want your life to be on hold you want a need to be able to see finality um, and be able to take you know a division of your fair share of the assets and move forward with it um, and final hearings unfortunately they are expensive they are lengthy they are um, often very tiresome for parties because of all the involvement and uh, matters involved in preparing your case for it and then having to give all evidence. So that is why private FDRs and FDRs generally work so effectively because you can try to cut down the time that you're involved in what for most people isn't you know a, a pleasant experience for anyone to have to go through um, talking about their finances um, before a third party. So that is why I say Whereas you can have perhaps a few months of delay, a few weeks of delay of trying to get the right judge, uh, to private FDR judge to represent you, uh, to assist both, both of you, um, a final hearing has too much uncertainty. So from a cost point of view, the shorter time that you're engaged in this process, the better for you, um, better for everyone. Um, 
and you know it's obviously you do have to pay for the fees of a private FDR judge and sometimes people can feel uh, discouraged that um, that's going to make it more expensive for me but actually that can be somewhat of a false economy because yeah. as I mentioned delay can cost more than the private FDR judges fees and normally uh, each party would pay half of the judges fees which people can be surprised at how modest those fees can be compared to the fees involved of going to final hearings certainly um, and all the preparation of that so I think that if you have more transparency right at the beginning do ask your solicitor how much will it cost me to have a private FDR um, what will be the associated costs for the barristers for the judge and weigh up weigh up your options and you may find that actually um, it's in my experience you know several thousands of pounds of uh, are saved by going through spending the money on a private FDR judge um, rather than as I mentioned going on with the process uncertainty not knowing which judge you're going to get at a final hearing and, and having an order imposed on you because I think the worst feeling in the world is uh, having that control over the process being taken away from you um, having a judge um, hear evidence which they will do at a final hearing and making an order which you may or may not be happy with but you may be stuck with for one reason or the other this is a voluntary negotiated process um, so you both have a say and the end goal is to come to a fair arrangement um, and that is what the private FDR judge will have at the back of their mind and they will usually give a warning about costs to both sides of going forward to final hearing and that can be quite powerful and yeah. um, that warning to, to know that you know that's what the implications can be it can sometimes be the difference between getting and buying the house that you want and not having that money to be able to do that because you've ended up spending um, more than you anticipated um, preparing for final hearings and going to final hearing and you could be ending up arguing over a pot of money that actually then gets spent in court fees Whereas exactly you, you you weren't going to end up any financially better off by going further in the process because you're just going to exactly. end up. yeah so with a bit of goodwill on both sides it can work very well um and you want to preserve the money for your family um rather than you know engage in the court process and not have that money benefit you perfect so trisha any final words of advice i think in terms of final words of advice um when we have a medical issue and we can't get hold of our private you know we can't get hold of our nhs gp or we can't get a hospital appointment quickly enough for many reasons we would go and see what alternatives there are we would go and find a private gp we would go to um, a private hospital appointments and we would invest to make sure that there is no delay that would negatively impact our health and i think in the same way um divorce financial cases are some of the most stressful things that you can go through in life um, so why not invest that in you by having private FTRs having forums available to you where you can cut this process short and move on with your life um, so if we would do it for our health why not do it in all aspects of our life and if a process is available to you to make it easier take the stress away uh, more quick then I would definitely say that's a worthwhile process to invest in absolutely you've been an amazing guest Trisha thank you ever so much I'm going to pop your link to your website and also to LinkedIn in the description below so if you want to find out more about Trisha then by all means just go along and have a look where she is and how to get hold of her um, and we'll definitely have you on again Trisha you've been absolutely amazing thank you thank you thank you very much and of course if anyone has any questions about the process of private FDRs or if you just want to know a little bit more about the court process or anything that I've spoken about today, please feel free to get in touch with me. I'm sure Thank you so much, everyone. Thanks, Fisher. Bye. Take care.